Woo! Despite my channel being a family-friendly channel with content suitable for all ages, this Let's Play series of Ghost Trick Phantom Detective has been rated T for Teen due to it featuring mild language and mild violence. So viewer discretion is advised for this Let's Play series. Welcome back everyone to Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. We are on Chapter 3 today. For those of you who don't remember, we uh, were trapped in Missile's apartment. And yep. we can't really get out because the phone got destroyed, so... Let's start here at 8.04 p.m. <coughs> and just an FYI, I've been sick for a week, so I may forget how to do everything. Once again, Lynn is in danger, and I think she knows it too. I sincerely doubt she'll be coming back to this apartment tonight. Here, let me do this. She and I are connected to each other somehow. She's my only lead, and I can't lose her. I have to get to her, and fast. All right. Just getting right into it. With the telephone in this apartment being out of service, my only hope of escape is to find another telephone. M no Mr. Desklamp here. The only friend I have to talk to is... That nice little doggy curled up there on the floor. Ghost World. Oh, yeah, so so we're on the Christmas tree ornament. <laughs> Remember we're in the apartment with uh, Santa Claus. Talk. Oh, hello! What's up? I was wondering if you could help me. I'll certainly try! About the only thing I'm really good at, though, is barking. There's really not much else. I think he might be right there. But I'm really, really good at barking! Miss Lynn comes chasing after me with a broom and the lady next door kicks the wall! I've got quite a bit of influence around these parts. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> cool. Um... So remember, you have to leave Ghost World in order to do tricks. Eh. Santa Claus is coming Santa Claus. to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. Oh, wait. I didn't do it right. There we go. Rock the painting. Rock the Casper. Rock the Casper. Oh, that didn't do anything. Oh, I thought it was going to knock it off the wall. I guess Cecil's not that powerful. I can't go down there. You'll have to wait for Santa to come back. Oh, stupid Santa. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Dust lamp does nothing. Door. Wait. Wrong button. Wrong Trick button. is on the right side. Wazam. <laughs> Shazam! Nothing's happening. Go back to the ornament. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll knock this wall down! I don't know what <laughs> her voice is gonna be till later. Oh, she has a telephone. <laughs> oh, yeah. she's more like, um... GG Galaxy, or Vasquez. Yeah, yeah. If you keep that racket up, I'll bring the whole dilapa uh, dilapated building down on you. <laughs> See, I thought because she had the wine and she was drunk, it's just like, SHUT UP! <laughs> <laughs> I think that's possible. Also, fun fact, Marty in the last episode thought that was the hitman, the yeah, blue I hitman. Yeah, I thought that would be the hitman! I thought he was in disguise! <laughs> So I was also trying to do a slight drag voice of like, shut up! <laughs> shut up, dear. <laughs> did I? Did you hear what I just heard? You mean the lady next door is angry, how? No, forget that. It was the sound of a telephone ringing coming from the apartment next door. Oh, I get it. You're thinking about borrowing her phone, aren't you? But how are you going to do that without breaking the wall down? Well, the lady next door is kindly offering to do it for us. Yeah, but she's mostly hoping to crush me underneath it. <laughs> ruff, ruff. Where's the chick? Where was the girl? Oh, Camilla. Yeah. She left. Remember when oh, yeah. Lynn called her and it's like, go to Chick Fil A, bring the yeah. music box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two things are certain: there's a telephone in the apartment next door, and I have to create a path to get there somehow. Should I keep barking? If you keep that up, I'll knock this wall down. If she's true to her word, we might be able to change the situation. I want to avoid the whole getting crushed part, though, if you don't mind. I have to do something to change this situation. If I can create just a little more racket somehow. Santa. <laughs> <laughs> it's Santa. <laughs> no, I don't want to talk. Cancel. You can move the cart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, missile. Don't change. What's on the couch? Uh, TV remote. 
Oh, back. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> I'll pound this wall open. <laughs> Whoa! What the <laughs> heck? Oh my gosh! <laughs> what the heck happened? <laughs> Holy cow. I told you, didn't I? I told you I'd knock the wall down on you. <laughs> Man, what a crabby lady. Did the dog die? So this is what it feels like to have a wall knocked down on you, huh? It's more like she knocked you out through the wall, really. I'm still alive, aren't I? You are. But the TV and the star ornament aren't. Mm, I'll never bark again, not as long as I live. But wait a minute. It looks like all that commotion wasn't for naught. Huh? Your barking made her create a path for me. It did? But the wall's still standing just like before! But there are paths only the dead can see. Oh, those kinds of paths! Trick time! So we're still in the TV remote. <laughs> bark, bark. So now that now that the star ornament and the TV are dead, there's uh, we can't make missile bark anymore. <laughs> Marty, you can phase through the wall. Pucha. <laughs> so you're leaving, huh? I guess so. You're going to go save Miss Camilla and Miss Lynn? I have to follow my own mystery first and foremost. That means everything to me. Maybe he'll learn that it's actually more important to save people. <laughs> but you will save them, right? If it helps me along my way, then yes. I don't have any powers of the dead. I'm not even dead, actually! <laughs> but I'm gonna find a way to go help Miss Camilla, too! We create our own paths, right, Missile? That's right! Okay, I'm leaving now. Guess this is our second goodbye. It is, isn't it? My name is Sissel. If we ever meet again, that's what you can call me. Sissel, huh? Got it! You know what, Sissel? I'm gonna create my own path, just like you said! Runs back and barks everywhere. <laughs> oh no, the lady's gonna be furious at this. Also, Missile, don't get a concussion, please. Yeah, please don't. Tonight is the holiest of all nights, my deadline. All I need to get some inspiration from the muses is this bottle and some cheese. Here's to the boorish people next door. <laughs> New info has Actually, been added. she looks exactly like another character from Nino Kuni. Oh. Like, exactly. Especially <laughs> since she likes to eat cheese. <laughs> okay. Are you alright, my darling angel? It'll be a cat. I guarantee it. <laughs> Have you taken your medicine like a good girl? I'm still so sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if not, then... I don't know. <laughs> if it's a child, then maybe not. Well, here I am in yet another strange room. What's with this oddly tense air of this place anyways? Now where is that little treasure I'm looking for? There it is. The telephone. Now if I can just borrow it. What is in that bed? Trick time! Even now, Lin's life is in danger. I have to use that phone, and fast. I can't very well make that woman bring it to me. I guess I'll have to find a way over there myself. Sure. Ghost. Nothing. Tilt. Turn. <laughs> Turn. And examine. Let's examine this. This thing is too heavy. I can't manipulate it. Maybe that woman built up her destructive power by hefting this puppy. It's more like a weapon than a book. Uh, oh, oh, if she starts talking. Oh. <laughs> oh, Mr. Prime Minister, you mustn't. I'm a married woman. And I'm a married man, but we can't resist this any longer. 
I'm ready to abdicate it all for you. Even if it means my ultimate ruination. Hmm. Ruination. Is that even a word? And that advocate just doesn't look right somehow. This is going to nag at me until I'm sure. Oh! She's gonna pick up the dictionary. I'll just go- I'm hanging out here. <laughs> Where's that dictionary? Let me see, I know I put it here somewhere. Now where could it have gone to? <laughs> it's on the floor. I just can't find it. What? <laughs> I didn't look very hard. <laughs> <coughs> no, I mustn't. I mustn't allow myself to believe in your love, Mr. Prime Minister. But why won't you believe me? My love for you is true, I swear. And it's so strong it overwhelms me. You know, I always wonder. If you can be overwhelmed by something, can you just be plain whelmed? This is going to nag at me until I'm sure. <laughs> so apparently she's she has to write this really terrible, <laughs> raunchy romance novel before the end of the night. <laughs> Where's my dictionary? Maybe you should help her find it. <laughs> I did nothing. I, I just, just can't, can't find, find it. it. <coughs> Sorry about the, uh, cough. Oh, wait, I said trick. Blam! <laughs> that did nothing. That's like that Animal Crossing water bird. Oh, yeah. No, Mr. Prime Minister, we mustn't. If the people ever find out, I don't care what they might think. What uh, What do the, ple the plebeian. Ple <laughs> plebeian masses understand anyway? Certainly not our love. Hmm. What is this Prime Minister talking about? I've never even heard the word plebeian before. This is going to nag at me until I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is going to be a slow writing night. <laughs> eh, been there, done that. Where's, Where's that, that dictionary? dictionary? <laughs> stupid dictionary. Notice how there's the rat that fell out of the vent, by the way. Where? The orange. Good to know. I can't do anything with it. No, you can't possess it, but maybe you could... This vein is too heavy. I can't manipulate it. <laughs> oh, it still won't work? No, nothing changed. I just can't find it. Whatever. You looked for five seconds. Like, literally five seconds. I don't know where to go or what to do. There is one obvious thing to do. I can't do anything with the latch. Oh, duh. Pacha! Oh, and now it says we're the same things. Okay. Yeah, but we might still have to do it to make her walk over again. Yeah, so oh, we've done Mr. this. Oh, Prime Minister. Oh. No, I'm a married man. <laughs> I love her music. Where's the dictionary? Oh, there it is. Oh, possess that dictionary. Ghost. The diction. There it is. But it's strange. I know I left this dictionary on the shelf. It's as if some little angel were playing naughty tricks on me. Perhaps my darling angel. I don't know what- I don't know what this is. Well, if it's a little girl or a little boy, you're probably better suited to do the voice. Ugh. What? Oh, it's a child. It's a little girl. What is it, my darling angel? Oh, my head hurts, mama. You poor dear, no wonder with a fever of 102?! Take her to the doctor! Why are you- No, we'll just put a water balloon on her head. Why are you drinking and eating cheese when your daughter's in agony? Uh, my deadline's tonight. <laughs> you understand how it works. <coughs> Here's to- here it is to a night of fever. Hotter than the love of my prime minister. <laughs> it's almost time to go off for my lesson. Can I take the night off? Yes, I suppose that would be best. But wait a minute. 
I bet you're happy to have an excuse to get out of it, aren't you? Not especially. If I ever don't want to go, I just don't want to go! And pretend I did. I go play with Camilla next door or something. Here's to the blunt honesty of my darling angel. <laughs> hey, today's Papa's birthday. Oh, is it? <laughs> Aren't we going to celebrate together? Let's not talk about your father, dear. Now Mama has to go back to work. I have a deadline tonight, after all. Mama, wait! I have just one thing to say. Don't try and put me in the middle of you two, okay? Whatever could you be talking about? I know what's going on, you know. You write novels, and Papa wants you to stop. But it was very selfish of you to take me and leave the house. I want to go home. Now, now, it's time for good little girls to go to sleep. Especially sick little girls. I hate you, Mama! <laughs> what yes! <laughs> New info has been added. Let's look at it. Oh, thought bubble first. These two are quite a pair. The father would have had to be a pretty strong man to hold his own against them. <laughs> Sounds like their family circumstances are pretty complicated. I wonder if I had a family. New info. Yeah, I lost uh, my life at Sissel. Yeah. Uh, he Wee. calls himself Ray. He's nearsighted Jigo. The eyebrowed villain. The masked muscle man. The other hitman. The little lady. Her name is Camilla. Over the phone, Lynn asked her to find the music box hidden in the apartment and bring it to the restaurant. A valiant pet. A friendly little Pomeranian. His name is Missile. <laughs> his mission is to protect the little girl who is his mistress. He's doing his best right now to create a path to do just that. <laughs> Perfumed lady. Lynn's neighbor. She lives in an apartment decorated in red with her daughter. Apparently she's a novelist who moved here due to a disagreement with her husband. Feverish firecracker. The daughter of the woman in purple. She has a fever of 102 and is resting in bed. Apparently she and Camilla are friends. So she isn't going out for her lesson tonight. Well, that, that doesn't make sense together. She and Camilla are friends, so she's not going to go out to her lesson tonight. Those are two separate clauses. Right. Oh, hang on. One thing first. What? I just want to double check everything's recording properly. Uh-huh. Good. Okay. Okay. We're over here. We got the turn knob. <laughs> My knob! <novel. laughs> sure. Oh my, the lamp's out. <laughs> Whoa, I would not strike a match there, but okay. <laughs> Ooh, more of dialogue. My darling lady, to think that you were a spy all along. What are you going to do with me, Mr. Prime Minister? I will arrest you and make sure you receive the proper penalty. You're sentenced to be imprisoned in my cell of love and punished with my whip of passion. Oh, Mr. Prime Minister. Oh, my dear lady. Mmm. <laughs> I hate to live in this Prime Minister's country. <laughs> Honestly, that's better than a lot of the raunchy romance novels out there. <laughs> I just typing with one hand. All this has happened in one minute. <laughs> <laughs> the perfumed lady types her novel for ten hours. <laughs> <laughs> with her wine. No, I can't examine that. Where do I go? Turn the lamp more. <laughs> oh, probably. <laughs> ah! What is going on? Oh, I made a typo. The telephone is right over there. If only I could get to it. Oh my gosh. I just need to jump over I there somehow. I know exactly what we need to do and it's gonna be so hard. I better keep my eyes open for and make just the right timing to make a move. We're gonna have to possess the paper in time. Yep. <laughs> Stop striking the match on your butt, lady. <laughs> she just threw the match in there, too. Wow. <laughs> Trick it again. Ah! What is going on? Oh, I made a typo. Possess. Possess. Yeah, I know. Cool. It's actually not that tight timing. <laughs> that poor girl. You see what's gotta happen? Crap. It's not that tight, honestly. Telephone. I can, but then I could go up here. <laughs> I mean, you could. 
have more fun with them. Drop a chandelier on the lead. <laughs> oh, okay, you can't. I wish. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's, a, there's an electrical spark going on up there. <laughs> that probably isn't good. <laughs> Sizzle's just messing with the plumbing of the building <laughs> for no this reason. This lady's been a jerk. <laughs> she has, but... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, nothing happens. Okay. <laughs> that stupid thing. Swing harder. I love the music here. Booyah. Oh, it's raining, uh. too. Yes, Mr. Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, is that you? <coughs> How many times are you going to make me tell you? Tonight is the holiest of all nights, and it's my deadline. Please, I'm begging you. Change your mind and come home to me. I think you're the one that needs to change his mind. Please, put yourself in my position. You can write your novel just as well from home. Until you change your mind, your daughter and I won't be coming home. Even if that means forever! Poor Prime Minister. Let me talk to Amelie then, at least. You can't talk to her. She's sick with a fever right now, and I won't have you giving her nightmares. I want to talk to Papa! No, I don't want you to hear her voice, or your- I don't want you to hear her voice! <laughs> I don't want you to hear your voice anymore tonight. Please, wait a minute. Don't try to call again, I won't answer. I refuse to answer! <coughs> I think this works that I'm also still sick a bit. <laughs> Trace completed. You got a new phone number, Lady's Red Apartment and the Troubled Man's Office. Now I finally have the telephone lines I need. I'm curious about this woman's husband, but I should go find my only lead first. We that, don't have to. That hitman who's after Lynn is sure to be heading to the junkyard right now. <laughs> I'd better hurry. Wonder if. The, so here's my question: Does this like branch off to different paths? So like, if you go and see this woman's husband, would like Lynn die? And then you're like, well, okay. well, you can always bring her back to life. There, it, the game really doesn't punish you for exploring new areas. So if you want to visit the troubled man's office, you totally can, and it's not going to change the rest of the yeah, story. Yeah, I want to go then. Okay. We're going. This is interesting to me. Howdy. Huh? So he's a rich dude, I guess. Are you alright, sir? I ordered all of you not to come near me! I, I beg your pardon, sir. <sighs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't have yelled at you like that. But I'd like to be left alone right now. You may go. Yes, sir! Oh boy. Another strange room and another strange person. I wish these telephone lines came with nameplates or something. Sheesh. Trick time. You know, apparently this guy is like the head of Britain. <laughs> Why would you leave that? I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> okay. That did absolutely <laughs> nothing. I don't think you can get up to the ceiling fan. I don't think there's anything to do here. Oh. Fine. It's got the cool music, though. Bye-bye, dude. Hope you feel better. <laughs> oh, I just realized. Try going to Lynn's apartment again. Because <laughs> the phone's dead. The line doesn't seem to be working. Guess I can't go there right now. Okay. Try going back to the luxurious parlor. This line doesn't seem to be working. Guess I can't go there either. Okay. Go to the junkyard! junkyard. 
Not much time has passed since I was here last, but the situation has changed. Is Phoenix right here? <laughs> <laughs> what? Looks like they're examining my body. I wonder who they are. Wait! Are both of these games connected? The ga the designer has confirmed they take place in the same universe. And I wouldn't be surprised. And beside them, a certain someone else wriggles and bounces happily. I wonder who that person really is, too. Welcome back. You weren't gone very long. What's going on here? The police are here to start their criminal investigation. You know, into your murder. My murder case, eh? Where's Lynn? Is she alright? So you found out her name already, did you? I'm impressed. I like this music. Excuse me? Ah! Lynn! It sounded like she was in some kind of immediate danger. We didn't care, though, because we went to the lady's apartment next we ha door. We had to in Great. order to use her phone. Not to mention the fact that a hitman is after her again. Well, you don't have to worry about that kind of thing. She was just taken into custody a few minutes ago. Custody? You mean she was arrested? But why? I don't know. I'm just a desk lamp. Probably because they thought that she murdered you. Hmm, I better see what I can find out. Trick time. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Quite a fiend, huh? This case. What? You look like he had spiky hair. Aww. So this is, this has been done, this guy doesn't have a name in the game. The fandom has dubbed him <laughs> Phoenix Rom. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, one of our own. A murderer. Hence we'll roll over this. That looks like pain. <laughs> and she's a rookie too. I heard she was carrying out some crazy investigation. Rookies aren't given the crazy assignments like that. Not even rookies like Lynn. Lynn's <laughs> such a rookie. <laughs> yeah, but I heard she was special. She's got strong ties to Inspector Cabanella of the Special Investigations Unit. <laughs> I plan on moving up the ladder on my own merits myself. Well, we detectives shouldn't be standing around gossiping. Never know who might be listening. Like me. Like me. Uh... <laughs> he's blue. <laughs> which means he's probably bad. <laughs> Are you? That's so racist of you, Marty. <laughs> what? He's blue skin, so he must be bad. I see how it is. No, that's what we've <laughs> discovered in the past, and what you've told me. <laughs> that's right. Oh. Think we can safely assume the cause of death was the bullet he took in the chest. This is like Mario <laughs> with a mustache no. on steroids. Just his looks. Oh, your voice. Uh, we think that maybe he Owen did Wilson. Owen, Owen Wilson, but really low pitched. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Bring the stretcher. I'll look into the rest back at the lab. Uh, I don't want you looking- Would you mind waiting here a bit, Doctor? Inspector Cabanella, head of the Special Investigation Unit, is on his way now. Special Investigation <laughs> Unit? What do they want with a case like this? I don't know, but Cabanella's our top investigator. We don't want to get him all bent out of shape or there'll be hell to pay. <laughs> don't see what that has to do with me. Oh, don't worry about Oh, me. bird, I am kind of... More. I don't think Santa has more than two feet. <laughs> I don't really want... I don't really get what Cabanella wants to come for, either. It's probably just a big bark for him, but it makes fiends tougher on us. Hey, watch what you say behind his back. Never know who might be listening. Like me. Like me. Yes. ding a ding What? Is this, like... What? Who's this flamboyant man? Yeah, definitely. What the heck? Oh, the tension of a crime scene! What the heck? Is he gonna dance? Yeah, now? nothing like it, baby. He's gonna walk down the stairs for such a long time. <laughs> this guy's amazing. <laughs> I like his dance. Like, that's the way to go down the stairs. Don't try it. <laughs> you will trip. Yeah. Evening, boys. How's it looking? Inspector Cabanella, thank you for coming. Allow me to report, sir. Fine, fine. You just gotta hold that thought. I'm gonna make a little phone call first. <laughs> 
I this love this like, guy's dance. This is like something out of anime, basically. <laughs> like, Oron Host Club, the main dude, like, just moves just, exactly like that. He's just like, oh. It's like Malfoy from Very Potter Musical, but better. Oh, yeah. Oh, Malfoy. So this is the head of the Special Investigation Unit. He seems, uh, unique. He hasn't rolled around on the floor, though, like Malfoy yet. <laughs> new info has been added. Trick time. But first, our new info. The careworn gentleman. He sits alone in his stately office, tearing out his hair. He's a frantic about his wife, the woman in purple who has left him. The green detective, a member of the police who's investigating my murder. His partner is the blue detective. He works under Inspector Cabanella. The blue detective, a member of the police who's investigating my murder. His partner is the green detective. He works under Inspector Cabanella. Old odd blue doctor. He's apparently a colleague of the detectives. He's examining my corpse. There's something off about him. Lanky and loose law man. The head of the special investigation unit, his name is Cabanella. Apparently he's the group's top investigator and looked up to by his men. He seems to dance through life. He has some say, kind of special title in. Dancing to, through life. Can somebody make a, a gif of this? Of him just <laughs> oh, dancing Oh, around. I'm sure there are plenty of gifs of him dancing. Alright, let's see who he is calling. Also, I can't remember how long this chapter is. This is probably a bit longer than the others. Oh, I could have talked to him. Deal me the deal. How's it going over there, baby? Going? How's it going? Yes. You'd like to know how it's going? Why I'd say you... it's going well enough, about fair to average, if I had to say. Yes, it's going all right. She looks really weird. That's a he. That's a he? Yeah. Not the man I was hoping to talk to there, baby. Do me a favor and put that other nice man on the horn now, would you? That's a nice fellow. If it has anything to do with the park, I'm the one to talk to. I'm the guardian of this park. Yes. <laughs> I basically pictured him to have a pleakly voice from Lilo and Stitch. Oh, oh. Ah, sorry about that, Inspector. I just got here. Well, glad to hear you made it. The other fellow just about threw me for a loop. Started blabbering something about being guardian of the park or some such. Yes, him. <sighs> sorry about that. <laughs> well, start by doing your staking out thing, baby. And buzz up if anything comes up. Buzz me. Uh, yes, sir. I think it's better if it says buzz up if and anything buzz comes up. up. Trace complete. We got a new phone number. The park. It looks like you're taking Oscar to the park. <laughs> now then, sir. If I may make my report, sir. Doc, you who? Oh, Doc. Talking to me? I need you to handle this case with your finest care and attention. Would you do that for me, Doc? Don't don't need you to tell me how to do my job. Any hoot, I'd like to see the suspect now, if I may. When, sir? I asked to do, let herself be taken into custody voluntarily, sir. She's being detained in the junkyard superintendent's office right now. The junkyard has its own office? Super's office, eh? Super! And where's that? Uh, just beyond that, where you parked your bicycle, Inspector! I'll go interview the suspect then. Yeah, nothing like it, baby. Again, I wonder why she was in the junkyard in the first place. <laughs> Carry on, boys. Like, I'm sure there was a reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good luck, sir! We may have lost some dialogue. I just noticed there was a talk balloon be right before we yeah, possessed Yeah, right before it. That's we fine, possessed though. it. Was it funny? I don't think so. I think it's just like, man, it really worries me when he's around or something. Yeah. <sighs> Trick time. Oh. Whew! That Inspector Cabanella. He sure has a strange air about him. You can say that again, and I've never seen anybody use the stairs the way he does. I hear he's dancing his way up the stairs of promotion that same airy way. And I hear Lin is his personal favorite. What's the deal between those two? Ooh! Hey, how should I know? <laughs> I gave him kind of the pain voice, but kind of not. <laughs> Boop, 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 boop. I love this music a lot. No, I can't get... the lunchbox and... I can't get to the lab. Or the bag. I think we can pretty safely assume that this was the murder weapon. Oh no, that pistol. Yep. Same model as the pistols you detectives carry around. You don't think it's Wins, do you? This is not good. If it's hers, it's all over. 
Selene is the detective and the murder weapon might be her pistol. What could it all mean? Trick time. Oh wait, new thing to possess underneath the car door. The pistol. So this is the weapon that took my life. A pistol, eh? My memory seems to be hazy on pistols. But I've seen them before, that's for sure. Let's see. This part right here is... Fool! If you want to fire the fame, aim it in your own direction! Uh, I didn't fire it! I'm the victim here! This is the act of somebody who's jealous of my abilities as a detective! <laughs> well, what are you glaring at me for? I'm heartily jealous of you! Well, guess that proves it's a real gun. <laughs> Bane. What? What? What was that? Is that what I think it was? The sound of a gun. I've got a bad feeling about this. Every time that phone rings, it's bad news. It's like that old riddle. Which came first, the ringing of the phone or the crime case? Um, if you say so. Yeah. <laughs> Trick time. I thought Ray was going to help us out. Be like, here, I'll move my lamp. You possess me. Ah, uh, there you are. Do me a favor and have the doc come to the super's office, would you? Ah, uh, he seems pretty busy at the moment, sir. Which one are you, the green suit or the blue one? Huh? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, the green one, sir. Can you not tell by the voices? Listen. They're pretty different. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Greeny, get the good doc over here this instant. Or I'll see to it you never have to wear a green suit again! Yes, sir! I'll send him right up there, sir! He might have just shot the mirror himself. Trace complete. You got a new phone number at the super's office. I'll just soon go up there. Or the park. Please, doctor! Go to the superintendent's office immediately! <sighs> if I must. Let me walk extremely slowly. Trick time! Oh, yeah. What's going on? Don't ask me! But something seems really, really wrong. That shot sounded like it was coming from somewhere around the maintenance building. Well, this is a perfect time to, uh... Go to the park. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Oh, I think we should go to the park. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what Pleakley has to say. <laughs> we need something to take care of this tension. It appears to be the entrance to a nearly deserted, dimly lit park. The voices of two young people drift over to me on the breeze. What the? He's like tingle. Stop the park from being turned into a housing site! Protect the park, the rock of the gods! Uh, sorry, but could you do that somewhere else? I'm a little busy right now, I don't have time to talk. I suppose you think I'm a man of dubious character, a questionable person! Uh, no, I, uh... But if an objective person well, you were asked, Dave might think you were a little suspicious yourself. As two suspicious characters, shouldn't we take the time to converse with each other? Oh boy. Alright, but just for a minute. There! I like your attitude! I like it very much! Let's relax and talk a little bit while then. The night is young and so are we! Aw, oh, man. Trick time. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I can look at <laughs> the leaflet. Oh, and I'll move the camera over to them. Or, yeah. See if we can hear them. Nope. <laughs> 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 Elect Pleakley for student body president! <laughs> look at these flyers I made! Wow, I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, he this... reminds me of, like, Tingle mixed with the great um, Mido or whatever. It's great, yeah. Signed to legalize marijuana! <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it's already been legalized in a lot of places, yeah. so. <laughs> Honestly, this could, again, be a gift for, like, anything. Oh, if only YouTube let you have thumbnails that were, like, gifts. Yeah. <laughs> I would totally make that the gift. <laughs> that would be great. Anyhow, let's go to the super's office. <laughs> Yet another gunshot rings out in the lonely junkyard on the edge of town. The sound gives me a feeling a new death will be waiting on the other side of the line. Apparently I'm not the only one the Reaper's interested in tonight. But as long as there's anything I can do about it, I don't plan on letting anyone else die. 
Oh, is that the end of the chapter? Yep, it is. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay, bird, <laughs> I guess. Okay, that's good because I, if, if the next part was part of the chapter, I'd be like, wow, this is a really long chapter. Okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time for chapter four. We're going to see what is lying for us on the other end of What's that telephone. What's in store? What's in store at the end of the telephone line? It's going to get interesting. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.